all you lovely people. I'm Crystal Ray. I am a certified health and fitness coach. In essence, I'm an empowerment coach. I'm a life balancing strategist. I help you feel empowered. I help you balance your life. I help you reduce the stress by cutting out the junk food and all the crazy thoughts and all that jazz. So I'm so stoked. Like y'all don't even understand how hype I am right now. The energy at the workshop was fantastic to begin with. And one of the women I was sitting with, like she was amazing. And so Abraham Hicks, who is he, right? It's not a he. Abraham Hicks is not a he. So there's a woman named Esther and her husband, Jerry, who has passed away and is moved on from us, but is still here, right? So Jerry and Esther, years ago, Esther found out that she was capable of channeling. So think about mediumship. She is able to channel the, this collective consciousness that calls itself Abraham Hicks. So I know all of us have different beliefs. I know not everybody may believe what I'm talking about. And if that's the case, turn this off. No hard feelings. I understand this is not what you believe. But for those of you who do believe in spirituality, who do believe in consciousness and yeah, that type of fun stuff and energies and vibrations and manifestation and the law of attraction and like all of that stuff. Stay tuned because I'm going to share some things that she spoke about today. And I think I have to take a deep breath just because there's so much that I want to give to you guys. Esther channels it, but Abraham Hicks is not her. Okay. This is the essence that's speaking to her, which is made up of a group of consciousness. So she is taking what she's sensing, feeling, hearing, however she interprets it. And she is now formulating it in a way that we are capable of understanding. And what's funny is I, I've read another book and I might have said this book to some of you in this group, Michael Newton, Journey of the Soul. And there's something Esther said today that Michael writes about, right? So there's similarities. So from where I sit in this world, how are so many different people talking about something the same way? And the fact that it's 2018 and Esther said something in the same way that Michael Newton said it when he wrote about his book, however long ago. Okay. Something similar. So there's a reason why there's synchronicity. There's a reason why things are happening. There are beliefs out there that we can change and we can question. And I'm going to get into that, but I want you to understand that. I want to say stuff, but I like, I'm, I want you to understand that some of the ways in which society has gotten us to believe in certain things are not really what they are. Okay. And Abraham Hicks is a way for us to get that and understand that and receive that. Let's talk about some of these things that Abraham Hicks brought up today. And yeah, let's just hop into it. I mean, you may choose to believe whatever you want to believe, but do not let your beliefs stop somebody else. Okay. That's all I want to say. And how do we manifest? How do we manifest? How do we bring into existence anything that we want? I'm going to give you a story. And this will be something that I post about at another point in time. But when I was younger, I wanted to model. Well, somebody had mentioned to my mom, like, oh my goodness, you should get Crystal into modeling. My mom didn't like the idea. I was nine and then I was 12. And she was like, no, she was too scared to get me into modeling. She was scared of of being taken advantage of or whatever might occur. So in 2012, I was like, all right, I'm gonna to try to get into modeling. Took pictures, sent it to all these agencies. I never heard a word back, N nothing at all. Nobody responded to me and I was like, all right, fine. I'm just gonna throw this dream away, whatever. Then in 2017, last year, guys, last year, I got back on Model Mayhem because I was building my business and I just wanted to work with photographers and in a time for print type of way so that they can get practice and I can get pictures for my business, for my Instagram, for my, what I do, right? Cause I need materials. I need stuff to put on social media. So I got on Model Mayhem and next thing I know, a photographer reaches out to me and is like, Hey, you need to submit to Couture, submit to Couture and whatever. I think you have a great look, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, whatever, this is some photographer. It took me, I think he messaged me in March or April, let's say. I didn't reach out until like August. It took me that long to gain the courage to even submit another email or submission to an agency because nothing had happened before. So I sent the email out the same day that I sent the email. Couture got back to me and was like, Hey, we're doing a casting tomorrow in New York city. Can you be there? 
sure, I'll be there. I went to the casting, I got booked to do a runway show, my first show ever, and he liked my look. And a week later, I went to the agency and I got booked as a model. I worked one other time in 2017 in October. Then 2018 came around, so the beginning of this year, I worked again in February. And then since May slash June, I've booked 10 gigs about in like the last three months. Okay, so what I want you to understand, talk about manifestation. I was not actively pursuing that per se, but I released my tension on making it happen and I allowed it to come to me. And it was a desire that I had, a true deep desire. So I was capable of manifesting this dream of mine and I keep getting more work and my portfolio keeps building and it's amazing, it lights me up. Like I love modeling, like it's so much fun to be able to create a picture to sell a product. Like there's, there's something magical in that. So that is a manifestation story that I've had recently. So I, I want you to hear that real story so you can understand the things that I'm saying when I read to you some of the notes from today. Guys, I'm so excited, like I'm so excited. <laughs> so there's five steps on creating manifestation. First, you have to ask, life gives us what we desire. Life also gives us contrast. What is contrast? Contrasts are those things that we don't want. Contrasts are those things that make us not feel good. Well, how do we get a desire? We have to experience something that we don't want to then figure out what we do want, okay? So we experience something, we're like, oh, I don't want that. I don't want to be broke. I don't want to work this job. I don't want to have this career. I don't want to feel this way. I don't want this illness, whatever, right? I don't want to feel unenergized, whatever the case might be. I don't want to have negative people in my life. I don't want to have draining relationships. I don't want to have a toxic relationship. We have a contrast that creates the desire. Cool. So now we ask, I want X, Y, and Z. I want to work solely for myself. Just an example. I want to feel good. I want to feel energized every morning, whatever the case might be. I want to have a healthy, loving relationship. Okay. So when you ask for a desire, it's given to you in a vibrational form. Okay. And our inner being knows it and it starts creating it. And so our inner being is very much aware of it. So it's creating this whole thing for you. It's happening. It's happening over here. It's going on, okay? And now what's happening is you might experience thoughts that make you not get into this area. Your inner being isn't looking at these thoughts that are negative and doubtful and whatever. It's over here. It's waiting for you, okay? So there's a vibration. Now we have to focus on what we want. So we gotta go with the flow versus versus focusing on what we don't want. So here, let's make this real. This is an example Abraham used. So I want more money. I want more money. I don't have enough money. My bills are here. I can't pay for my money. I don't have enough money, but I want more money, but I, I don't have enough money. So your thoughts are constantly thinking, I don't have enough. I don't have enough money, but you want the money. So you're going back and forth between I want, I don't want, I want, I don't want, I don't want, okay? You can't get into the I want fully because you're still focusing on the thing that you don't have. You're still focusing on what is a reality for you, not what is a possibility, not what is coming to you. So that's the interest, that is the issue. You're focusing on this reality and what you think about is what you get. So if you're constantly thinking about, but I don't have the money, I don't have the money to pay my bills, I don't have the money to do this, I don't have the money to go on a vacation. Well, no doubt you're gonna keep not having the money because that's all you're thinking about. All you're thinking about is I don't have the money. What do you expect? You're gonna keep not having the money, okay? But now, if you flip it to the other side and you think about, I have the money. I have the money to pay my bills. I have the money to pay my rent. I have the money to take a vacation. And you continuously focus on that, that's a different vibrational energy. And that's what you're thinking about. So if you're thinking about that, it's gonna to start to come to you, okay? It's really exciting stuff. Um, so, what we have to do is we have to accept that we're supposed to feel good. And we're supposed to allow that wanting to feel aligned, okay, hold up, allowing wanting to feel aligned to help you feel good. So like, what I want you to understand and what I want you to know is that you are allowed to have everything that you want. You are allowed to feel good. You are allowed to 
have money. Like you're allowed to have all these things. You're supposed to feel good. That's what you're supposed to be in. So we, the whole point of this is getting yourself into a place where you feel good most of the time, right? So once you get into this place where you're continuously to always feel good, you're going to witness contrast again. And that's when you're able to acknowledge that this is contrast and it's helping you figure out a desire that you want instead. Now you go back to step one and you do it all over again, right? But you still maintain that feeling of feeling good. So, oh my goodness, there's more about this that I can't wait to like dive into, but let's keep on that. So essentially you have to get out of the, I know what I don't want phase. Thinking about what you don't want or saying to yourself, stop thinking about what I don't want, but still thinking about what you don't want. Do you get that? It's like kind of like wordy, but if you're sitting here and you're thinking, I want more money, I want more money, and then you're thinking, I don't want more money, and then you think, I need to stop thinking that I don't want more money, those two thoughts are making you still think that you don't want, that you don't have enough money. So the real thought is, I, I have enough money. And you feel it, you feel it in your body. It, there's a difference. And it is focusing on what is coming to you, not focusing on your reality. So you can't determine what you're going to receive in life if you only focus on what you've already gotten. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. So with all of this, this is allowing your vibration to rise. So I, I do wanna go into this other topic real quick because it, for me, it's a really good visual. She talks about having an emotional spectrum and it's in one of her books, I think, Ask and Then You'll Ask and Receive. Um, I haven't finished reading it all, so I'm not quite sure where in the book it is, but she talks about an emotional spectrum and she talks about the unwanted and the wanted, right? And then we were in all these different shades of the spectrum. Dissatisfied and satisfied, keep it like that. So what ends up happening is that you're gonna be on the, on the different shades of the spectrum. And she says, or Abraham Hicks says that, the real secret is getting into a place of satisfaction and contentment. And that is smack dab in the middle of that spectrum. And so anything, if you're at, all you need to do is reach satisfaction. All you need to do is reach contentment. So anything from grief, despair, regret, anger, frustration, that's all in the dissatisfaction stage. Anything above that is when we get into satisfaction. And so once we hit that middle line, we're now capable of raising into, like we're now capable of receiving what is going on from what we requested, right? So our vortex is the thing that we want, it's our desire. So the vortex is creating and helping us get the ideas, the creativity, the whatever that case might be. And once we're able to get into that satisfied state, we now can hear this. We can hear our inner being. We can hear the vortex talking to us saying, this, here's an idea for you. This is what's gonna go on for you. Like, think about it. Like there's people who tap into an abundant state, right? How is it that there's writers that make millions of dollars? How is it that there are people that are musicians and painters and all of these different types of um, careers or people that work in as CEOs, right? Like what are they tapping into that is allowing themselves to have what they have, right? So when you're able to tap into the satisfaction place, you're now capable of raising your vibration so that you can hear from your vortex, okay? So, I don't know if that makes sense, but that is when you are in the receiving mode. And being in the receiving mode is the secret to attracting what you want, okay? So you got to raise your vibration, you have gotta get in that receiving mode. And, so what happens is that we're too busy looking at things that we don't want and that's what stops you from getting what you do want so the idea is stop because you're thinking the things that you don't want okay so i think i hit that home i think i've like said that enough times um there's another topic that i do want to talk about because i do think that it's really important and i do love it because i've come to this kind of realization recently in my life and i want it helped me feel better. And so I, I just hope that me sharing it might be able to help you in some type of way. Um, but before we get before we get there, the trick in all of this is that you want to catch your thoughts early. So if you're having a dissatisfying thought, a fearful thought, a worried thought, a thought that is of doubting yourself, a thought that is not making you feel well, you want to stop it as soon as you can. So 
you wake up in the morning and this is why an appreciation journal where you're when you're thinking about all the things that you do appreciate or meditating and, and just thinking about everything that's satisfying for you everything that makes you feel good that's why this practice is so important because you're more capable of getting into that satisfaction state first thing in the morning so you wake up in the morning and you get into that satisfaction state and now what'll happen is let's say in an hour a dissatisfying thought comes up well you already started your day out with 10 satisfying thoughts I'm amazing. Um, my ideal clients come to me easily and effortlessly. I'm healthy. I have the best family and friends. Like whatever those thoughts are that make you feel good, right? So the thoughts are coming to you and they're satisfying. And then you have a thought of, well, what if nobody cares about what I have to say? Now what you do with that dissatisfying thought is you think of thoughts that knock it down. So if somebody says, what if I say something that nobody, you know, nobody wants to hear what I have to say? Well, so-and-so just messaged me saying that they really enjoyed the fact that I shared this. So-and-so, you know, and, and you disprove that dissatisfying thought and now you have more satisfying thoughts. So now that brings you back up. Do you get it? So instead of having a dissatisfying thought being like, oh, nobody wants to hear what I have to say. Oh, that's right. Like, so-and-so just gave me such a hard time yesterday. I miscommunicate all the time and going down the spiral, you just go back into the satisfaction. So we don't, we don't give a lot of light or energy to these negative dissatisfying thoughts. We nip them in the butt. We say, I hear you, but you know what? You're not real because of all these other things that feel so good, right? Oh, I'm a shy person. Well, I got on stage and I competed in an NPC bodybuilding competition. Well, I'm a, I, um, I am sickly. I haven't gotten sick in X amount of weeks or months, right? So we want to stop the thoughts as soon as they come because we don't want to, this is an image that she had used. She imagined in San Francisco, one of those rolly hills, right? And you're at the top with your car and you're looking down the hill and you realize what it's like if you push your car, okay? So you push it, but then you get in front of it and you stop it and it doesn't go very far. You don't want to be at the end of the hill waiting to stop that car because it's going to go all the way down, right? How much momentum is it going to pick up? So what you want to do is when you're having that negative thought, you want to stop it instantly and come up with a satisfying thought. That's going to help keep you in that satisfaction state. That's going to help keep you at a higher vibration. That's going to help keep you being able to manifest what you want, to take a thought that you're having and create it into a reality. Take that thought and make it manifest it, make it real, right? Like the other day I wanted bacon. <laughs> I don't know why I really want to bacon with my eggs. And I was like, I'm not paying freaking $12 for some damn bacon. Next thing you know, my food arrives and I have bacon in it. How? I don't know. Right. But I wanted it. So talk about manifestation. So let's keep going. So the other thing, expectancy is everything. And Yes, there is. so she talked about influence today, about people influencing other people. She gave us like a wonderful story about it. I'm not gonna try to repeat it because I'm gonna butcher it. But your expectancy in things. If you are expecting something for somebody, you're creating what it is that you're looking for. So if you're expecting somebody to mess up, you're gonna be looking for the ways that they're messing up and that's gonna come to light or they're gonna feel that vibration from you and they are going to step into it and mess up on their own in a sense. So you have to be very clear on your expectations and what you're manifesting. And I have a team of 10, like this hit home for me for my day job because you know I, I manage these 10 fabulous people but other people knock them down all the time and only see the negativity in them and what they do wrong. And it's very challenging for me to help keep them feeling well and feeling good. And so I have to talk to my boss on Monday, but basically be like, we have to maintain this higher, like this higher expectation of them and keep seeing them as doing well and doing great because there's another team that's not doing that for them and that's what comes to light with them. Right, so we have to be one of the people to pioneer this change within ourselves. But just know like, if you're expecting somebody to do something to you and then it happens, you expected it, you manifested it. Why are you manifesting it? Expect something different. Expect something that's going to feel good. You get what you think about. So if you're getting what you don't want in your life, if people are treating you in a disrespectful way, if you're getting um, 
if you're if you're having things happen to you if you're if you're experiencing things that you do not want this is a lesson for you because you're creating your own reality you're creating your own experience so the question is if your life is full of things that you do not want what are the thoughts that you're thinking are you continuously thinking what you don't want or are you thinking about what you do want so this is something that i do want to bring to your attention because it makes a really big difference and it's a learning lesson. All it is is helping you realize how you are, how you're currently living. That's all that it is. Here's another thing that she talked about, full brainer versus no brainer. Full brainer is, equals focus. No brainer equals no focus. I thought that was really funny and cool. She's like so funny. Like, all right. So one of the things that I always struggle with when it comes to life is why are we here? What's our purpose? Why are we here living in this world? And one of the things that she had said was that joyful expansion is why we're here with the emphasis on joy. And this is something that I've been learning, especially in this year. So many things happen to you in your life more easily and more, they're more readily available when you are experiencing joy most of the time, when you are having the most fun, when you are fully embodying life, like when you're just having a blast, that's when your life, everything that you're manifesting is coming into you because you're in the higher vibration. And so expansion is happening all the time, but it's about being joyful with it. It's about being in that joyous state. And she also said like every second is a manifestation, every single moment. And think about it. You have 70,000 thoughts a day. Every single moment is a chance to manifest something. Every single moment is a chance that you're having a thought. Okay. So I'm going to end, I'm going to talk about this one last topic. And I think this is going to be it for what I'm going to share from today. Maybe one other thing. We're going to talk about death because I feel like it's a topic that I like to talk about. Um, and it's a topic I like to talk about because for so long I have feared it. And for so long I've been angry with it because it took my grandma, right? And many a times I felt as if I was supposed to get closure, okay? Like I wasn't supposed to feel grief as much as I do, right? Like I'm supposed to have closure. Like I, I shouldn't have lost somebody 25 years ago and still be able to cry, right? Like, I'm weak because that's what happens to me. And I have a new perspective. I have a really new perspective. And I love it. I, I love this perspective and this idea. And also, like, Michael Newton's book, Journey to Souls, he helped transform my idea of, theft, of death as well. But what Esther said today took it to another level. And so you all can believe whatever you want to believe. I'm just going to preface it with that. Um, keep in mind, I am somebody who is sensitive and I'm able to feel things and know things. And all of us are intuitive. Every single one of us is intuitive. Um, it's just a matter of allowing ourselves to tap into that space. So one woman had come up because she had lost her father a year ago and he was her best friend and, and her mentor. And she was very upset because she was struggling to connect with him. And Esther pointed out to her that he is now in that satisfaction realm and she's reaching out to him when she is in need. So she's not feeling satisfaction. So she can't hear him, right? Bring this in another form of way. Esther lost Jerry, right? They were lifetime partners, worked together, had this whole career together and this, all right. So this story I thought was really freaking cool. And Esther explained that one day she was driving her car and she ended up taking a different exit that she normally doesn't take because there was traffic. And she ended up in an area where her and Jerry hung out a lot. And so she's looking around and she's having all these thoughts about how her and Jerry did things certain ways. And so Esther is able to channel. She's a medium. She's capable of hearing people who have passed on. Okay. And so she hears Jerry and you know, a part of her was thinking that she was thinking the thoughts, you know, missing him or something of that nature. And Jerry was basically like, you're thinking the thoughts because I'm thinking them. 
Don't you remember when X, Y, and Z happened there and when the truck flipped over over there and Jerry's thinking of these thoughts that are reminding her of the place and that. So the point in this, and this is the beauty in this that I love because it, it gives me comfort and I struggle with that. So it, it gives me a lot of comfort is that the relationship still continues even though the person is not physically here. It's just a matter of being able to allow ourselves into the space in which we can be comforted by somebody. And trust me, I know there's a lot of people who are capable of feeling people when they leave. They hear them, they sense them, because I, I promise like this is real. You, ha you may have your own beliefs, but for me, it's comforting. Because anytime you're thinking about somebody who you lost, they're always there. They're always there listening to you. It's just a matter of you being open to listening to them. And so one of the things that stops us from being able to embrace that connection is that when we think of the person, we immediately think of the loss. And when we think of the loss, we think of the grief. Where's the grief? Where's that sadness? Where's that anger or whatever feelings we may have? That's in dissatisfaction. The person we're thinking about is no longer in that. They're they're happy. They're in a much better place than we are. They're not experiencing the suffering that we're going through. They're living their best life. They're having so much fun. So they can't be, when you're down here, they're not there. You have to get to that place of feeling satisfaction and contentment, right? We got, we have to get there. Contemplation. So what I thought was so cool, and this is definitely something that I, I do believe is that the, the relationship continues. You know, who's to say that just because somebody left us physically means that we're done with them? We're not. They're very much still interested in us. They're very much still visiting us and all around and there to support us and talking to us and in our thoughts. Why do you think you think about them? They might be thinking about you, right? And so that's the interesting thing when it comes to intuition. The thoughts you're thinking may also be what you're intuitively getting. So sifting through the thoughts and sifting through the feelings, right? That's what it's about. And starting to trust, right? You, you get to decide your beliefs. You get to decide your feelings and your thoughts at any point in time. So if you decide that you want to believe that the thought that you had was the person that you lost, then go for it. Who's here to stop you? That's your perception, that's your reality, that's your belief. If it gives you comfort, fantastic, right? And so, hence, surrounding ourselves with people and who we talked about certain things about make a difference because we don't want to have people poo-pooing us because then that's not gonna make us feel good. So, on that note, two things. If you're wanting something and it is not showing up, then you still have work that you need to do. If you're sitting here and you're saying, I really, really, really want a loving relationship. I really want to make more money. The question is, what are you still working through? Is there fear? What belief is holding you back? And the reality in this is nobody is gonna know better than you. And this is where creating a relationship with your inner being, with your inner self is vital. This is where sitting in stillness and meditating, this is where this all comes in because then you can hear yourself. You can hear that intuition. You can hear source, spirit. You can hear your guides. Like I say, call it what you want, believe what you want. But for me, there is a reality in all of this. Why? Because I live it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because I live it. And I choose to manifest my life. And guys, I have manifested some crazy things. I mean, here's an another example. I started working in corporate America about four years ago. I got there. A year after I'd been there, I got my first promotion and I was hungry for it. I was like, I got into that job looking at the next job. Got it when I hit a year. And then once I got that, I was like, that's cute. I want this type of money instead. A year and some change later, I got my second promotion and I hit that dollar amount that I wanted. Okay. Things happen. Things do happen for you. So you think a thought and, and it, it does come, it does manifest. It, that desire is, can happen. 
There's no reason why it can't. It's the beliefs that we create that limit us. It's the doubt that we have that limits us. We get in our own way. Realize whatever you want can come to you. Whatever. I did not think that at 27 years old, I would get signed by a modeling agency. Okay? Did not believe it. I did, I did not think it would happen. But I still, I had that dream. And I was taking pictures. I was doing the work, not realizing that I was doing it. I was taking pictures for my business and practicing that art, not realizing that I was manifesting it still, right? But you can be deliberate in your manifestation. And so being deliberate in your manifestation is focusing on the things that make you feel good. Focusing, and here's this one, believe in the vibrational reality because there's power of your own thought, right? So believe in what you want. So manifesting. Act as if you already have it. Stay in that space. Debunk the beliefs. Immediately when a dissatisfying belief comes up, something that's going against what you want, something that does not feel good, something that does not keep you in a high vibe, positive, feel good state, immediately think of things that counteract that, that prove that thought wrong, or just things that make you feel better. I'm so pumped up. <laughs> I really love this stuff. Like I've grown up with spirituality and I've kept it to myself ish. If you know me in person, I'll talk about it, but I don't always talk about it in the depths of how I believe it. Someone else has a different belief to each his own, right? Like I'm not gonna judge you for your belief, but I'm not gonna allow somebody to change my belief. Not on this topic because I know the power. I know the power, I know how, <laughs> I know how good it feels when we tap into this vibrational space. I know what can happen in our life when we get there. I know how much energy we can have. I, I know that there's nothing better than, than feeling this. In a way, it's bliss. And it feels really, really, really good. And what I wish is for every single person that I get to encounter or that I work with is capable of feeling this type of joy on a daily basis. Because for a long time, I was not this. For a long time, I was very angry. I was very sad, I was depressed, I was anxious, and I hid from my emotions by utilizing alcohol and weed and cigarettes. And I'm not there anymore. So I know the contrast. I'm not sitting here speaking to you as if I'm somebody who hasn't done this. I'm not speaking to you as if I'm somebody who's never gone through anything. I've gone through I've had stories, I've had limiting beliefs. I still have some that I'm working through, right? Like all of us are always continually growing. That's what life's about. But when you choose how you want to feel, when you choose your power, when you recognize the power inside of you, when you acknowledge the fact that you get to decide how you want to feel every single day, your life is different every single day because nobody outside of you changes you. Nobody outside of you is capable of changing how you want to feel. Like guys, like that is so powerful. Like imagine that you're capable of feeling good all the time, regardless of what's inside of you, what's outside of you. People come to you, somebody cuts you off while you're driving, they're coming to you with drama and problems, somebody speaks to you in an angry tone, but you are in full alignment and you're able to just be like, I send you some love. I hope your day gets better. I'm sorry to hear that, right? Like you're capable of acknowledging the fact that none of that is you. You're capable of choosing how you want to feel vibrationally, energetically. 
You're capable of choosing the words you want to say to somebody. Like, it's so powerful. It is so powerful and your world changes. And when you are joyful every day, everything you think about that you want manifests and you get it and you have it and it's now your reality. Being in that room, ugh, it felt so good to be in that energy. It felt so, so, so good. Um, it was amazing. It was really cool. For me, this is so powerful. So powerful. So, thank you again to anybody who watched this. I'll catch y'all later. Bye.